This video is on the percent proportion, but before we start talking specifically about the percent proportion, uh, a quick reminder. There are some different types of ratios, and we've talked about our part-to-part -part ratios versus our part-to-whole ratios. Um, if we're going to do percent proportion, we need to be working with part-to-whole, because percent is going to... Uh, involve what percentage of the whole. However, if you're given a part-to-part -part ratio, it's pretty easy to convert it to a part-to-whole ratio. Uh, first, a quick example. A part-to-part -part ratio might say something like there are four boys for every seven girls in math class today. Um, now, four to seven is our part-to-part -part ratio. That doesn't mean there are only four boys and only seven girls. Uh, perhaps we started with eight boys and 14 girls, or 12 boys and 21 girls, but that's a really big class, so I hope not, uh, because we can reduce ratios just like we can fractions. Now, if we wanted to then change it to a part-to-whole ratio, if there are four boys to seven girls, we add those up, and that gives us a total of 11 parts. So even without knowing exactly how big our original class size is, I can still use these reduced values to create part-to-whole ratios. Uh, there are four elevenths of the class as boys, and seven elevenths are girls. Notice when I did this, I ended up changing to fractions because when I'm doing a part-to-whole ratio, I'm doing something out of something else. And we seem to kind of naturally want to go towards fractions with that. But part-to-part -part and part-to-whole ratios both can be expressed in fraction or in ratio form. Uh, I think for me, naturally, I tend to think about using the colon and writing a ratio with part-to-part -part and using a fraction and writing our part-to-whole values in uh, fraction form. But that's just me. So... Keeping that in mind, let's now talk about what the actual percent proportion is. It looks like this. Percent out of 100 is equal to part out of whole. Now, the 100 will always be there because that's what percent means. It means out of 100. And the part and the whole depend on whatever situation you're dealing with. Sometimes those are pretty easy to figure out. Sometimes, however, they're a little bit less clear as to which value is the part and which value is the whole, especially if the part ends up being larger than the whole. Uh, in some situations, we could be dealing with something that's more than 100%, so the part could be greater than the value of the whole. So you can use uh, a couple of little keywords as clues to help you figure out which uh, numbers need to go into which place. The keyword for the part is that it's usually next to the word is, and the keyword for the whole is it's, use, it's next to the word of. So, for example, if I said, what is 20% of 80? Well, so the percent, right, is right there next to the percent sign. So I know where that's going to go. The 100 will always be there because percent is always out of 100. Of 80, all right, so that means that's my whole. And then what is? That's the thing I need to figure out. So that's the part that's missing that's going to get temporarily filled in with a variable. 20% out of 100 is going to be equivalent to some value out of 80. Now, if you can use an easy scale factor, feel free to use that scale factor. If there's not a scale factor, then you can solve it algebraically. If I were to solve it algebraically, in this case, since x is being divided by 80 in my proportion, I would multiply both sides of my proportion by 80. However, there is a scale factor I can see, this time not going across, but between numerator and denominator. Since I'm trying to solve for this numerator, I want to see what I can do to this denominator. Well, I can do divided by 5. Notice I'm including the arrow showing the direction. So that way, I repeat the same arrow, same direction, same math over here, and 80 divided by 5 should give us x. So once I calculate that, I see that x is 16. So 16 is 20% of 80. Let's take a look at another example. 30 is 7.5% of what number? So I can already start by filling in my fraction bars, my equal, my 100, those will all be there. 30 is, 
So that's my part that goes at the top on the right hand side. 7.5%, so I know that goes above the 100. Of what number? So that's the part that's missing. The of is my keyword for my whole, so that comes down here. I don't see an easy scale factor that I can apply right now, so that means I want to solve this algebraically. And if I'm going to solve it algebraically, I need the variable to be in the numerator. How to do that? Remember, flip it over, reciprocals. 100 over 7.5 equals x over 30 is an equivalent proportion to the first one. And now with my variable in the numerator, I can multiply both sides by the 30 it was divided by. Right? This represents x divided by 30. When I multiply it by 30, those undo each other, and that leaves me with just x. Here, I can do this math. 30 times 100 is 3,000. 3,000 over 7.5, well, might have to uh, do a little math on this one, but uh, I believe that equals 400. So the answer is 400. And now for the do now problems. Uh, take a second, you might want to pause your video, write down these problems, make sure to write a proportion to represent them, and solve. So when we look at number one, what percent of 20 is 45? I see what percent, so I know the missing part is the percent over 100. Of 20, that means 20 is my whole, is 45, so 45 is the part. This time my part is larger than my whole, but with my clue words I know I have everything in the right place. When I solve, before I solve I might want to actually reduce this ratio just to make my math a little bit easier. 45 over 20 as a fraction, I can reduce that by dividing by 5 and make that 9 fourths. Uh, when I do that, it makes it a little bit easy, easier to see. I can apply a scale factor of multiplying by 25 from right to left. So I can do that up at the top as well. And 9 times 25 tells me that x is 225. Since it's what percent, let's please try to remember to add that percent sign in there. 16 is 30 percent of what number? So 16 is, that means it's going to go up top on the right hand side, 30 percent. So 30 is going to go over the 100. And of what number? Telling me this is where my x goes. Again, I might want to simplify. I can get rid of that last zero. Uh, I still don't see any nice scale factors, so let's solve this algebraically. First, flipping it over so that my variable is at the top then multiplying both sides by that denominator underneath the variable so that I can undo that. When I do that, x is 160 over 3. Now for number 3, 40 is what percent of 60? So 40 is, telling me that that is the part, what percent, so I know my percent is missing out of 100, of 60, so there's my whole. Again, probably easiest if I simplify this fraction. I can divide these both by 20 and get 2 thirds. There's no easy scale factor, so uh, to solve this algebraically, I would need to multiply both sides by 100. That tells me that x is 200 over 3. Now, because I'm asking for a percent here, it's going to be better if we change this to a mixed number in this case. In number two up above, I went ahead and left this as an improper fraction because that's not such a problem. 16 is 30 percent of 160 thirds. But it seems weird talking about 200 thirds percent. So let's change this to a mixed number. It's going to be 66 and 2 thirds. Don't forget your percent sign. Do not try to change this to a decimal. Last but not least, number four, what is 150 percent of 48? What is, that's my indicator that the part is missing, 150 percent, so the percent, and it still goes over 100, even though my percentage is bigger than 100 itself, percent always means out of 100. And of 48, they're not actually physically next to each other, but in the question they are. So of is my whole. Um, before I solve this, again, I see that this can be reduced. Those are both divisible by 50. And look, those smaller numbers are going to make my work so much easier. 
Uh, to go from 48 to 2, you could try to find the scale factor there. Uh, sorry, let's go the other way. I'm sorry. 2 to 48, that is going to be times 24. So let's do the same thing at the top, times 24. X is equal to 3 times 24, which is 72.